Good morning. I'm Ed Slat from GitLab in the uh, Professional Services Group. I'm going to show in this video how to stand up a GitLab instance in a Docker containers, or actually two Docker containers. We'll have a GitLab instance and also a runner instance, and we'll see how to register the runner and create a simple pipeline and watch it run. So uh, it should come together pretty quickly. Hopefully it, you'll be able to do this in 10 or 15 minutes, maybe less than that. And this YAML file that I'm going to use, Joe Marcus set it up. I used it last week at a training and it went really well. So hopefully it'll be useful and we'll get started. I show this directory, an empty directory, and I do have a slide, a slide deck that you could start at. Here's the URL. I'll post it in the video and the directions. So this slide deck, really we're looking at three slides. These are the instructions that we're going to follow. If we go down in the slides, we'll see the Docker Compose file that we're going to use, a YAML file. And after that, we're going to see the registration command that we're going to use to register the runner. So the first thing that we're going to do is make sure that our Docker container, or our Docker installation on our host is configured in a way that will work. And we need to do that. We need at least eight gigabytes of RAM for a default for our containers. So to check that, we're going to say uh, OSX. I can top right. I can click on Docker's. I can say preferences advanced and I can confirm my memories at eight gigabytes. By default, it's two gigabytes. That didn't work on my machine. I had to increase it. I increased it at eight gigabytes. You might be able to use less than that, but I haven't tested it. But eight gigabytes does work. The other thing that you'll want to be careful as far as these things go is that your path isn't too long where you're running. So I'll open a terminal where I intend to run and do a PWD. And we can see that my path looks to be uh, maybe 40 or 50 characters long. One of my original runs, I had a much longer path and it didn't like it. I was able to fix that, I think, by decreasing the path length. And I think that I saw a post that implied that there was trouble with certain paths. So if you have trouble, you'll see that your Docker, your container doesn't come up as healthy and you might be able to run it back to one of these two things. So with that, we'll create the YAML file and get started. I'm going to just create the file. And it will have to have this exact name. Now we'll open the file and we'll edit its contents. This slide, the uh, the YAML file does have a scroll bar, so be sure to get it all. We'll save that. And now we'll cat it just to make sure we didn't get any um, thing we didn't want. And that looks okay. Fine. So now we will come back up to the directions. We checked that we have eight gigabytes, created the YAML file, and now we'll do the Docker Compose up-d. Okay. So the Docker compose command typically happens very fast. We just saw it happen in three or four seconds. The container is not up yet and you should not try to browse to it yet. It, it doesn't behave very well if you try to browse before it gets all the way up. So to see when it gets all the way up, you'll do a Docker PS. And we're looking at the status attribute. So here are the two, inst uh, the two containers we just created. One is the GitLab web, that's our main instance, and one is the runner container. So the GitLab web shows a status of health starting, and we need to wait for that to say health healthy before we try to browse to it and continue the lab. So on this machine, that normally takes about four minutes the first time. We will wait and see. Oh, also with that, I like to use a watch docker ps so we'll see updates uh, every two seconds all right there are three minutes it came up healthy and now we can move on and we'll browse to localhost 8080 
we're going to create a new password. We're going to change our password for root. And now we're going to log in and you will use root as a username. Okay, and this is showing that our instance looks to be okay. So now we're going to create a project. We want to register the runner. We want to see it run. So we're going to create a simple project with a simple pipeline. We're going to see that the pipeline gets stuck because there are no runners registered at this point. Then we'll register a runner and watch the pipeline execute our, our job. So we'll create a project. Test project. Just use the defaults. We'll create a pipeline by new file right at the project dot gitlab dash ci dot yaml no a will give us the pipeline we know we got the file right because it gave us the drop down list for these templates i'm going to make a trivial job j with a script exit zero i think that is a legitimate trivial job i'm going to wait i'm, I'm doing the commit the linter is going to come back and tell us, yes, it is valid. So at this point, we can expect that a pipeline is fired and, and it's pending. It's showing stuck like we expected. So if I click on the pipeline, I can see the job that's stuck. And if I click on the job, I get a little description here that says the job is stuck because we don't have any active runners, which we know. So now we will go ahead and register a runner. To do that, we're going to use the third slide, a command in the third slide. And we're going to register a runner at the instance level. So to do that, we need a token at the instance level. We'll get that in a minute. I'll take this command, copy paste buffer, put it into a text file just so we can manipulate it. Now we have to go get the token. To get the token, you're going to look in the admin panel. You get that or the admin area through the wrench. Then it's going to be overview, runners. And here's where we get the instance token. And I'll put or the, the runner token at the instance scope. So I just put that in copy paste buffer. And there's going to be a follow on video that shows how you can scope different runners at different levels. But for now, we're just going to do a runner at the very top for the entire instance. I put the token in the copy paste buffer. I will put it into our command. And now this command is run at the host level. So we'll just drop into this command that, or this terminal we already have going. I'll paste it in there. When it runs, it comes back very fast and says the registration has succeeded. So at this point, I can refresh my runners UI and I can see my runner down here. And now if I go over to my jobs, I can see that it got picked up and it's running right now. So that's it. That's how you create the Docker instance, register a runner, see a pipeline go off from Docker's in a way that you can bring it up, pull it down all you like. Let's do that right now. Let's scrub it out. So we'll do to scrub it out. If I do an LS in this directory, I can see all the directories that were mapped out by the initial compose statement or by the initial like YAML. I'm going to do a Docker compose down. That brings down the containers and removes them. I can see that the user interface is no longer alive. I'll just kill these. Okay, the down finished. At this point, I could scrub out the directory and restart with an up-d. So thank you.